bottoms of San Francisco. I'm there in two weeks. I'm there for Pride weekend. That's crazy. I don't know what it is about San Francisco, but you guys buy your tickets at the last minute, and it stresses me out. So AshleyGavin.com, and then I've got upstate New York, Virginia, and a ton of cities in the Midwest coming up this summer. I'm so excited. And then Kate has their monthly show, Lucas Spectacular, in New York on June 28th. Go check it out. And please support the Patreon. I've fun little project coming up with that um, that I'm excited about. It is the backbone. It's more than the backbone. It's this whole freaking thing, guys. Patreon.com slash WHGS. It really helps. And there's a $1 option, which might make you think, oh, how big a difference is that going to make? If everyone who listened donated, we'd all be much, much happier people. <laughs> uh, just $1 would make a huge difference. And Mercury Stardust, the trans handyman, comes on the podcast today to help Kate with their house, but to also give us a, a little glimpse into her life uh, post-transition and how that kind of turned her into a femdom. We're going to get into that. It's very fun. Um, and she is really, really funny. She used to do stand-up comedy, so she's hilarious. All right, you guys, I'm a little stressy this week, so I hope if you're stressy, you figure that out. Thanks for supporting me. Thanks for for all the kind words and just everything you guys do to make my life a little better. I really appreciate you, and I hope you have a great week. I've been f***ing. I came out as trans like four years ago. It's been really great learning how it is to be a femdom. Beforehand, I was really dick-centric because, like, that was my mindset. Oh, I got this big old d***. I'm going to I'm gonna d*** stuff. Oh, I d*** things, you know? Like, it's very, like, American pie. I'm going to stick my d*** in apple pie. Yeah, you know? So yeah. doming was really hard for me after I came out. Like, I was like... I don't know if I feel good about this, but now I gotta tell you, being a femme dom, real good shit. Real good <laughs> shit. I'm a big fan. What a great guest we have today. Yes. Highly requested guest. Hi- highly requested, highly advised. Adv- yeah, yeah, definitely. Usually people are saying, you got to have this person on the podcast because I want them to be on the podcast. And this time you were like, they were like, you have to have her on the podcast because you need her. Kate <laughs> absolutely needs this guest's advice. Huge on TikTok and Instagram and social media and all of that. You know her as the trans handy ma'am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you doing that can, uh, that can applause. That's, that's our wonderful. that's our sound booth that we finally have working after two years of tinkering with it. But you go by Mercury Stardust. Is that what you like? Do you like to be called Mercury for the remainder yes. of this? Yes. My name is Mercury Stardust. A-, a lot of people like to call me Mercury Star. F- um, Nebula <laughs> Starfish. Uh, Mercury talks a lot. Uh, Mercury, the ego. I hear all of it. It's all good stuff. All good stuff. What would like a friend call you just around the house? Like if you're in another room, they go, hey, Merc. Merc, 100%. I get Merc. I also, a lot of my friends call me Merc jerk a lot. I get that a lot. Uh, There's definitely like a pun to be made too with Merkin. Oh my God. No, 100%. I used to do a bunch of memes back in the day when I cared about having a dick. Once again, dick, really dick heavy right now, but (laughs) which is not what you want to be when you're trans femme, but really dick heavy. Uh, And I used to always make jokes about like, you know, oh, is is are they hardly Merkin or are they Merkin hard? Which one? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time. Oh, that's funny. Um, and what are we doing with? A, are you doing like a live makeup? You know that we're we're doing the podcast now, right? That's, I I feared, <laughs> but also I'm multitasking. All right. Yes, yes. I, I'm 34 years old. I have ADHD. <laughs> if I don't do something while talking, nothing gets done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love it. One of the reasons, and I'm sure this will be part of Kate's story today, I'm assuming. Yeah. Some home improvement. Yeah, I'm, I got to take full advantage here. Yeah. Kate's, <laughs> Kate's house is literally <laughs> falling apart. <laughs> so everyone was like, you got to have the trans handyman on. <laughs> like, she's going to fix Kate's house. <laughs> we thought maybe we could even do like a YouTube collab, <laughs> you know, and fix up Kate's house. Yeah. I'll help. I'll help. What's uh, your rate? You. And do you give a discount to people with a large Instagram following? I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, my rate is basically I do for free online. So, yeah. you know. Yes. Thank you so it. much for saying that. I don't think people realize how much of it is free. 
all of it. I, I drove 264 miles to help a stranger with their house, right? Ooh. I drove from Madison, Wisconsin to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh my I drove gosh. all the way. I spent like eight to $900 of my own company money to yep. fix it all up. And then everyone was like, I hope you charge them well. And I'm like, charge them. <laughs> <laughs> it was my idea. Could you imagine me in a consultation with somebody and they're like asking me for help and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'll drive out there. And I'll charge you 15,000 uh, fucking dollars to do all this work. Could you imagine? Fuck you. I do this shit for free. Um, <laughs> you know? It's not. I love it. I, love, yeah. it. I love it. Well, I, I'm assuming you're putting it on your YouTube channel. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would be lying if I didn't say I didn't make a shit ton of money from it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and can't you, you can also Perfect. write off the expense of your labor yeah. for that. Well, you never know, amount. right? You yeah. never know. Like when we did, this is the first time we ever did it. So we're in this consultation with this person and it's just very obvious. They have no idea what they're doing at their house and they're yeah. just so overwhelmed and scared. And I was like, I, I guess I'm just going to fucking come over there. I'm only 264 miles away. <laughs> uh, that's well, not a bad, bad hike. We got to fly you out to look at Kate's house. And also, I think we should tape a a uh, sizzler, what they call in the biz, a sizzler, because I really want to make like femme queer eye. Like lesbian queer eye, <laughs> because it's you know uh, what I mean. It's like too male dominated, and we need you can be like the home improvement host, and I what? I don't know what I am. Maybe like dating, like game. Mm. <laughs> You're the pickup I, artist. I'm the I'm the I'm the peacocker of the. <laughs> I'll teach you how to peacock. <laughs> then we just need like someone who does piercings and tattoos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who reads tarot? Someone reads tarot. Yeah, that's great. That's actually really great, tarot. Yeah, that's and we'll... like the gayest pitch. Like this is like queer eye, but like real, real femme driven. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because it you should, know, under all our names, it should say our pronouns and our astrology signs. Like that should be. <laughs> I mean, we've been trying to get Kate's for ages. Did you I finally know. get it? No, they don't. I still haven't well, found my birth certificate. We'll never fucking know. <laughs> You need to find it just for what's your sign, uh, Mercury? I'm a Sagittarius. Uh, okay. And I have no other idea. I'm something, I don't know what the fuck the moon is and the like <laughs> rising, either, ascending shit. I don't yeah. know that. I don't know either. Yeah. We're, we're kind of agnostic about it uh, on here. Agnostic. We're, we're yeah, astrology agnostic. Yeah, it's true. I'm everything agnostic. Well, maybe we should get into it. We should do some intros. Yes. Okay, just copy the format. I know you're going to be fine. Uh, I am Ashley Gavin. I'm a cis, a white, gay, cis, gay, white woman, cis, white. <laughs> That's all. That, that could be interpreted horribly. Well, how? In like a Rachel Dolezal way. <laughs> if you guys remember that horrible. I do remember. Oh, oh, I'm well, <laughs> I get called, uh, like people say that to trans femme people all the time. Are now. you serious? Uh, yeah, because they, they call her trans racial, right? So then they bring her up in an argument to be clear, all the time to against be clear, trans femme people. They they call her transracial is not okay. Just to make sure that yeah. no anyone at home it doesn't understand what's happening here. Yeah. No, she's not she, cool. She sucks. We are well aware. You don't sucks. get to s switch races. Yeah. 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 She sucks so hard. Like, so hard. The worst. Um, but anyway, I'm not cis white. I am just plain white. Cis, comma, white. Cis, comma, comma white, comma, gay. Uh, she, her pronouns. Feeling good today. So many tour things. So many things. All the things. AshleyGavin.com. As always. The cancel coach to keep me from getting canceled is uh is he is he playing squash? Cause it looks like those balls are stuck in a box. Oh my god! <laughs> I just got the second part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Kate Sisk. Hey everybody, it's me, Kate Sisk, the cancel coach of Fat in the Chat. I am a white bisexual lesbian dyke. Any pronouns? Gender non-conforming. My gender is submitted by the listeners this week is Russell from Movie Up when he does his little Boy Scout oath. That's cute. A sweet, I like that. Sweet, cute gender of the week. Thank you yeah. for sending it in. And Mercury, do you mind introducing yourself and your pronouns? Anything you want the people at home to know? I am Mercury Stardust, a trans handyman. My pronouns are she, her. I'm uh, a trans femme, uh, demisexual, uh, pansexual, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, <laughs> white lady. There we go. 
And so I took the, a good poop before I came on, so I think perfect. that's a good I, I also did. I'm I'm on some uh, I'm on magnesium citrate now for my muscles. Oh, look at you! Got that information from the internet. You know, whenever I get something from the internet, I'm like, this isn't gonna fucking work. Here's Ashley Gavin self-medicating her way out of constipation. <laughs> well, it's for my muscles, actually. Although it is helping me poop, mm. and uh, it actually works. That's if you're good. having some muscle pain, keeping you from sleeping, magnesium citrate. Good there stuff. You. There you go. Yeah. Um. What? Wait. What were we talking about before the poop? I was doing my intro. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And what are you working on? Like, how's your YouTube channel going? Like, wh- can people find you on there as of right now? Uh, right now, they can find me on TikTok and Instagram. The one they can't find me on is the one you mentioned. <laughs> okay. But it'll be up soon, so they should go subscribe. Yeah, I think to- I totally have so many plans. But when you're like TikTok, you got to do it every flipping day. Every day. It's like you got to have at least two videos every day. So it's like you're just, it's a marathon every single yes, day. Yes, it's, uh, and it's for free. <laughs> it's for free. It's for free. So it's for give free. Me your, you can give me tips at Mercury Stardust on Venmo. Exactly. Or maybe for a different creator that you, <laughs> you, you, hours of free content that you consume from them. Hours, hours, <laughs> hours. Wait, yeah, Mercury, plug your, uh, plug your TikTok and Insta handles. Yeah, my TikTok handle is Mercury Stardust. And then my Instagram handle is Mercury Stardust Tops. Um, yeah, yeah, now, okay, hold on. Let me, hold on. Before you laugh at me, my spouse's drag name, their drag king, their drag name is ZZ Tops. All okay, right? I like it. It's okay. real funny, real funny if you're like into classic rock and shit. And if, you know, you know gay sex. It's hilarious on so many levels. Uh, and we are but, into gay sex. Yeah, yeah. Super As might be clear. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, let's get into it. I, I kind of have a fun one today. Okay, all right. This one's interactive. This one is like interactive. interactive. Yeah, I have the phone lines are open. <laughs> <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to have a call in. We should do a call in. Okay, but this one is interactive in the sense that it's it's been a saga. It's been a years long saga with this girl. And... Oh, I need you guys to figure out. My main question is, was she negging me? That's a year long saga. Do I know who this is? No. Oh, OK. No. OK. So let me set the scene for you, Mercury, about I'm about a year ago, two years ago. This is 2020. This is longer than this is pre-pandemic. I went on a date with this girl. In, this in is, early, like early 2020 or 2019? I think one of the late 2019 or early 2020. OK. This is years. <laughs> OK. I go on a date with this girl. Yeah. We are having trouble scheduling. Right. Because of comedy. Okay. I'm a comedian. We're both comedians. Mercury, you know how it is. <laughs> We're getting up at night. So yes. we can't necessarily have dates during yes. the- Oh, yeah. Dating is awful when you're a performer of any kind. It's yes. like the worst. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And it's hard to understand the business. Had you not had you not yet settled on the little trick where you invite a girl to meet you at a show and then you go somewhere after? So that's what I did. <laughs> okay, okay. We get coffee. Yeah. No, we meet at my show. Right. It's at Caroline's. <laughs> In Midtown? In Midtown. Okay. Not the best location, but Caroline's is a world famous club. It's, and a world class one, I would say. Yes. It's nice. It's one it's of the nice nicest experience. clubs that you can But then where at. do you go after Times Square? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so I t- I, we just went to a coffee shop. But the thing is- Paid as- $14 for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we actually went to an Applebee's. <laughs> did you go to the M&M store? We, then we went to the M&M store. Mercury's laughing. We lost the audio on that. But your eyeshadow is really coming along, by the way. Well, this is- thank you. It will take me the entire podcast just to finish this <laughs> eyeshadow, which is a great, great little snippet for the audio listeners. Like, that's a great, you know. <laughs> this is what the audio about. listeners are doing at home right now. And a lot of people listen to things and put on makeup and like put that on TikTok. It's like a thing that people do. Oh, yeah. My favorite was when they were lip syncing to John Mulaney videos. While putting on makeup, yeah, that was a thing. Because it seems they like don't the do hardest. That anymore and everyone's mad. Uh, at them. I know I shouldn't have even brought it up. I, but uh, it's the funniest to me because to do that impression, <laughs> you have to use your face so much. Yeah, and then to be putting makeup on at the same time seemed like a great opportunity for an eye injury. It people, <laughs> people did it to my stand up. Yeah, that's and, fun. And I was like, what is this? Why do you guys do this? <laughs> it's 
that's funny. Yeah. I like it. But TikTok anyway. It's a weird place. TikTok is a weird fucking place. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that you've seen people do with your videos, like duets and sound and stuff like that? I get a lot. So first of all, I get a lot of like requests for like how to fix shit. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people will sit there. Now, here's the thing. People get emotional when we fix things all the time. Right. So I'm not knocking anyone getting emotional when we're trying to fix things. But what's hilarious to me is to do a 45 second video where all you're doing is crying and not showing me what is broken. That happens all the time. <laughs> like there'll be a, a full grown woman with a baby in her arms just crying like my door. I don't know what to do. It's so bad. I don't know. And the whole time, like, oh, God, she she's in such a bad way. And then she never shows me the fucking door. <laughs> like I'm just screaming at the video. Show me the fucking door. <laughs> America's in decline, honestly. If, if, like that, if that doesn't like symbolize what's going on, just screaming about your problems and not being able to like identify what the problem is. But so yeah, so I I bring her to Caroline's and she starts texting me. She's like, I'm nervous. Like, why is this in a basement? Like, no, no, no. She like starts. This is not. This is not a rando basement. This is not a rando basement. It has a full. It seats like three hundred. It seats three hundred fifty people. It has a beautiful like <laughs> awning out in the street with lights. <laughs> Big lights. It has my poster on the. <laughs> the there's a poster of my face you, <laughs> on the fucking door. Imagine walking into like Radio City Music Hall and being like, "I hate this. It's in a closet." <laughs> yeah, it. That was basically what she was doing. I was like, "You're good. Like, come downstairs." She comes downstairs. We go to coffee. I think we pretty much pretty. We establish very quickly that this is not a love connection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it a mm -hmm. sex connection? No. It's just oh. not going well. She fully says to me at one point, she goes, like, you We're not seem, compatible. Yeah, this does not seem like we're going to have sex. Okay. Basically. So why don't you just get up and leave? That's essentially what we did. Okay. <laughs> so you mutually okay. were like, end of date. Yeah. I think, <sighs> I don't want to put words in her mouth. Okay. I think there was a part of her that wanted it to work. Mm. But I genuinely believe in my heart that if t both people aren't into it, when it's that early, it needs a chemistry. You need the chemistry. Yeah. 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 It wasn't going to work. There's no way that was going to fucking no, work. As much as maybe she <laughs> felt like she would have liked it to work. Like, it's a good on paper kind of thing. Yeah. You don't want to force someone to like you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, years later. <laughs> oh, no. So you <laughs> this is like another part of this story <laughs> years later. OK, wait. So just to recap, you part amicably from the date. Oh, and then she sent me a nude a few weeks after that. OK, that's an important detail. Oh, that's a huge detail. <laughs> <laughs> she made it in like an app with GIFs because she put she put like GIFs over her nipples. Oh, I thought you meant she sent you a, like a gif of a nude. No, I did not like get a, a, shimmying, a jiffy nude. A jiffy nude? A jiffy nude! I did not get a jiffy nude. Okay, so there was there was little little gifs covering her little bits. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Fireworks. Coming to was... a t-shirt near you. <laughs> <laughs> then I I just sent like a nice response back being like, wow. What a delight. <laughs> oh my God. What do you, what do you so say? Awkward. I don't know. It's like you bit into an in season pear <laughs> or like saw a butterfly. Like, oh, what a delight. What a delight. That is wild. That is, that is not a response anyone wants when you're sending a nude to somebody. Look. Like, it's not like, oh my God, isn't the weather nice outside today? Like, fuck you. <laughs> That's, that's my butthole right there. Isn't that a delight? Butthole. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. I don't think to say to somebody. First of all, Mercury, I think we might be soulmates. Second of all, <laughs> second of all, I like, I don't know. I didn't want her to feel like I didn't appreciate her body. Like, she sent me a nude. It's a very vulnerable <laughs> thing to do. Unsolicited. So, yeah, but no true. nipples or anything. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> so I wasn't harassed or anything, you know. Also, Wait, like, what was covering her pussy? Was it just the, no the pussy. gif it was of just Homer Simpson going back into the bush? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that is the greatest thing. Oh, my God. The imagery. The imagery is in my head. <laughs> oh, dope. 
<laughs> no, there was okay. no pussy shot. Okay. It was it was really nice of her to send me a nude. Mm. I wanted to indicate to her that I thought it was very vulnerable and kind that she would do that. But you still weren't interested. But that I was not interested. Yeah. She we kind of went back and forth. <laughs> yeah. About whether or not I'd be interested. And I was like very happy for the nudes, happy to keep in touch or whatever, but not interested. Okay. So then years pass. Then years pass. I get a text in uh, in January. <laughs> oh my God, hearing more about you in San Francisco than ever, the gays here are into you. Okay. And I said, I feel super embarrassed, but I don't have this number saved. <laughs> <laughs> you should have just saved it. <laughs> like what a oh, delight hold on. <laughs> as the name. No, 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 no. We got to recap from her point of view. Recap from her point of view. She sends you a nude. <laughs> you sent her back. What a delight. Two years later, <laughs> you reply to a nice, just acquaintance style text. Don't know who is, who is this. Acquaintance who is this? style text. Yeah. It's like, exactly what hey, it was. What's up? I didn't ask for the nude. <laughs> I didn't ask for the nude. Okay. I, but, we got coffee but, one time. That, okay. <laughs> Instead of saying that's a delight, you save the fucking number in your goddamn phone. Well, here's what happened. Here's what I said. This is so funny. I said, I feel super embarrassed, but I don't have this number saved. If it makes you feel better, my phone swapped context and deleted some. So I thought this girl who i hooked up with recently was my uncle which is true my phone got all my <laughs> contacts all fucked up so i thought recently this girl was texting me i thought it was my uncle Uh oh yeah <laughs> it was not good so she was obviously in the crossfire of my phone getting messed up yeah so she goes oh god i feel like i shouldn't have your number saved so don't feel embarrassed she says who it is and then here's the part where i start to get a little negged negged you scheduled a date with me in between two of your open mics <laughs> yep just to be clear there was a poster with my face on it at oh, caroline's shit. i don't know if she saw it at caroline's a 350 seater venue Caroline's <laughs> on Broadway, yeah, 350 seats for, for my teeny, teeny, tiny open mic. <laughs> yeah, you scheduled her in between your open mic and your coffee house poetry reading. <laughs> what a wild way to bring you down a peg after she just insulated. Yes. Like, and she started the conversation saying, oh, you're doing so well. And then just to remind you, yeah, I met you when you were nothing. You know what, I mean? like, what a wild, what a wild thing to say to somebody. Well, I did not like it. So what did Let you say? Let me just say this. If you slide in my DMs and you neg me, which happens, mm -hmm. I don't respond. I do not respond to negging. Nagging might work for some people. It does not work on me. I want straight up sincere validation. <laughs> what did you say? I said, oh, you, hi. You, did you fight her on it? I think I was actually performing at Caroline's, but I appreciate the nag. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to let it right go. I know. I cannot let you anything not, go. Hold on. You do not come out with shining of gold in this conversation. You are I don't covered give a in horse shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Get my credits right. Oh, oh no. Oh my God. That's so okay. good. That's so good. She goes, haha, was not an egg. And I may have actually posted on my instagram a poll to determine whether or not i was being negged <laughs> oh my god see. i love this so i'm well, sorry give me I one moment i to can't read this. see the words but there is lots of back and forth <laughs> oh my god oh oh i i hadn't posted it yet she goes ha 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 was not a neg and i said well i didn't mean to upset you i just work at night so it's hard to schedule with folks who work during the day which i think is a very valid response and i will also say People who don't understand this concept baffle me. Even, it, <laughs> even if it had been two open mics, which it was not. It was one show. 
And I specifically went first on the show. I took the bullet spot, which is the hardest spot. Mm -hmm. I specifically did that so that I would have time to meet her after my show. You took a bullet so for her. I took a bullet for her. I <laughs> rescheduled everything so that I could have coffee with this girl. And then wild. I don't know. But to me, it's like, even if it were open mics, it's disrespectful to say to someone who's trying to make a dream come true yeah. in a very difficult field. You know what I mean? We were saying dating as a performer, it's so hard. I mean, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, all joking aside, which is impossible for the three of us, <laughs> um, I will say that you are not really in the wrong here because it's so hard to make this living work. I mean, I'm a professional performer too, right? So like I host a weekly bur uh, burlesque show here in tropical Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> and when you, dating is like, it is a hurdle to yeah. do all the time. Yeah. Like if you're trying yeah. to meet people or go out with anybody, you always have to be like, yeah, but there's like three days of the week that I can't even yeah. get close to. Yeah. You know, yeah. my, my Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays are fucking shot. Right. Right. But then Wednesdays and Sundays, I don't know if I want to be around people at the time. Maybe yeah. we'll see someone on a Monday or Tuesday, maybe. But some days I'm just like, honestly, I barely want to do content those days. Yeah. So yes. like it can be a hurdle. It's a hurdle. And it's not like I would ever ask this person to meet at 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. You know what I mean? Because they'd be like, yeah. I'm obviously in the office, you weirdo. Right. And yeah. and for them. Okay. Yeah. So this is all true. I don't know that she's <laughs> I don't know that she's le leveled any criticism against you. <laughs> I think I in her say, mind, yeah. it's one little, in your mind, it's the, it's the coffee date that didn't go well, followed by the I think calling a show an open <laughs> mic is an offense. Well, yeah, that was a neg, but I don't think she's trying to rehash. No. I don't think she's trying to say you were wrong to do this. I no. just think of, we, we, we make people into stories in our minds, you know? Yeah. She's the girl who was the bad coffee date. It was a little neggy on the date. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Neggy coffee date followed by unsolicited gift nude. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> For for her, it's uh like probably tall comedian. I think calling who, who I think, scheduled me in between shows. I think calling Caroline's a weird, creepy basement is a strange <laughs> neg. I think there was strange negging on the date, and then I think I got a weird. I, so basically, <laughs> um, basically, how familiar, how familiar is she with the comic world, though? Yeah, because that could that could be confusing. Because I a lot know. of people don't understand what what like. I mean, if you're an outsider and you don't know that an open mic is such a drop down, right? <laughs> yes. And you are saying that to somebody who is a professional fucking <laughs> comedian, right? Yes. I mean, you might not know that. So True. like, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, but if she is familiar and she went on a date with you, I don't between... think she knows it because there Sorry. were, yeah, there were a couple, like there, there were just a couple, <laughs> everyone's going to think I'm such an ass listening to this. But basically all of this is to say, <laughs> Was it a neg? The people online felt it was a neg. And then three days ago, oh she sent me a picture of a baseball stadium. Wait, what? Is that an into window that I'm missing? She wants to take you out to the ball game? I don't understand. An unsolicited baseball ball pick. photo. Ball pick. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so she sent me this baseball picture. What stadium is it? I don't know. Ring Central? What's Ring Central? No. The Athletics. The Oakland A's. Oh, yeah. What is this? I, I don't know. Why did she send me a picture of a baseball stadium? Maybe maybe something happened and she thinks well, you're the... her uncle. <laughs> 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 what was the text before this? What was the text before no this? Text. The last... <laughs> no. no text. No context. There was no... So wait, wait, wait. wait. But hold on, there must have been a re resol like resolution of some kind, right? Uh, we were. She was basically saying like, I wasn't nagging you, Ashley. She saw my social media posts, <laughs> and I was like, got to do it for the content. Basically, yeah. is what I said. Uh -huh. Then there was a little bit of back and forth, and, and then it died down. And then it died down. And then days later, no, months later, months, <laughs> months later. <laughs> What is happening? The, the unsolicited ball pick. I think what we're learning here is either A, she gets your number mixed up with someone else's, right? That's B, probably what it was. Yeah. B, um, she's just really bad with like communication and has no idea how to talk to humans. Maybe she has like eight cats, 
And she's really good at talking to pussies, but not an actual person who has one. <laughs> like, maybe that's a thing. This is very funny. What a strange And I just thing. straight up didn't reply because I was like, I don't want to start a conversation with her. Because I'm just going to get my feelings hurt. Literally every time I talk to this girl, I get my feelings hurt. Do you think maybe she's dating an MLB player and she's like, oh, he made me come to one of his pickup games. <laughs> <laughs> t-ball <laughs> oh man well what that's an, my what that's my gay strange sex interaction that's great gay sex yeah strange san francisco i'm coming to san francisco come on guys get your tickets i don't know why this one is moving so much slower than the other cities but get your shit together san francisco i'm excited to see you i'm coming pride weekend and it is the gay motherland so i hope you guys can come and see me and go to ashleygavin.com to check out all my other tour dates or to sign up to get on my tour alert listener don't forget to support the patreon patreon.com slash whgs that's how we pay alex he is a full-time employee of the podcast we could not pay him on ads alone that's how we pay kate and of course me also this is full-time work so please consider going and donating and in return for those donations you get bonus episodes you get comped tickets when i'm in your city um you get extended unfiltered uncut episodes um weekly access to my zoom stream of my show in new york and lots of other stuff patreon.com slash whgs mercury did you have gay sex this week well i had i actually you know what what's wild is i went like three years not having any gay sex and now i'm just having like so much gay sex like so much (laughs) so like for those who don't know i came out as trans like four years ago and when you're trans femme, I, I can't speak for anyone else. I can only speak for myself, right? Mm-hmm. Your body changes a lot. And that means uh, certain parts of your body don't function in the same way that they used to. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about my dick for those people who aren't following me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and my, I take estradiol. I take progesterone. I take... Um, like a cuclide. I can't fucking say these words. I fucking... Okay. What my doctor says, like a cuclide. I take I take a T blocker. I take a T blocker. Goodbye, right? I, yeah, yeah. Bye, uh, and the <laughs> slip and slide. <laughs> um, is this podcast just the making noise podcast now? Is that what this is? We're having gay noise. <laughs> but I take a T blocker. I take estrogen, and I take pills that make my tits just. Real titty, real nice. nice and thick titties. Okay, <laughs> that sounds cool. But the T blockers mess with my like drive, yeah, like sexual drive. They mess with my dick, so like it can be a little bit difficult to be like, oh yeah, I want to have gay sex. No idea how. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's it's a little tricky. So, um, and I've been married for three years. Uh, we've been together for six. We're polyamorous, um, which is you know almost status quo for the trans queers. <laughs> to be honest you know when i, I know i feel tra- like so weird that i'm not in a that i'm not polyamorous <laughs> like it's it's starting to feel like well you're also not in a, in like any sort of correct primary relationship yeah well so you are you are kind of you're <laughs> seeing p- multiple people yeah but but you know what i mean kind of i do know what you mean <laughs> don't you feel but a I, little you bit you crave monogamy yeah what, very you, much so yeah I'm a sad, I'm like basically yeah, You straight. crave, you you really do crave. I mean, if I, I've only known you for a little bit, but I strike you as someone who just loves baseball a lot. And <laughs> I really would just love to see ballpark picks. I just talk. want all those on, <laughs> listener, slide into my DMs, send me a good, good ballpark, a stadium pick. Oh yeah, 100%. Next time I'm at a Milwaukee Brewers game and I see the little sausages running across the stadium, <laughs> I'm going to send you a picture of a sausage just running its fucking mind out. Uh, and I don't, no context whatsoever. Don't no even idea. Get my number from Kate. Don't even like tell me who you are. I want this to come fully. People try and figure out what my phone number is. Just send me the ballpark pics. Yeah, 100%. And the then BPPs. you need to send a gif right after that of Homer Simpson going back into a bush. You need to be able to. <laughs> Really set the tone. <laughs> Ballpark Homer Simpson. That's all that they want. That's exactly what you need to do. No, but I've been fucking. Uh, nice. That's, that's what we call that's a awesome. transition in the biz. Um, so anyways, I that was a trans joke. 
I don't know if anyone cares. But I essentially... I got it, I got it. We care. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, But I have been dating somebody who is just remarkable. Makes my heart flutter, you know. And when you've been married for a long time, too, seeing someone new is just... It's a nice little thing. It's it's nice, you know. And this person's name is uh, Chester, or we call them Chess. They're a wonderful human. Human. They're non-binary. My spouse, by the way, is trans, mask, non-binary. Uh, so, like, super, we're super queer. The whole fucking, like, poly <laughs> tree system is just a queer system. I'm amazed <laughs> I'm that you're doing queer. this in Wisconsin. Oh, my God. But here's the thing, though. There's about 12 of us, and we've all fucked each other. <laughs> That's a <the> big story. <laughs> you know? Like, here's the thing. Like, like you know that six de- degrees of separation? It's like... It's like 0.5 degrees of separation of like, you know, just foreplay and sex. Like we've all we're all having trans queer <laughs> sex somewhere in the long lines. And we all know each other and we've all met each other's parents. You know what I mean? <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. But essentially, uh, it's been really great, like connecting with someone in a way that I have not connected in a long time. And also learning what how it is to be a femdom. Do you know, like mm. I was a dom beforehand, right? Like, but I can't, my, my connotation with that was like very like cis man, like perspective. So yeah. doming was really hard for me after I came out. Like I was like, I don't know if I feel good about this, but now I gotta tell you being a femme dom, real good shit, real good <laughs> shit. I'm a big fan, big fan of femme doming. Real good shit right there. No, real good shit. <laughs> Why did I turn into like a shitty Boston accent, just yelling about the Patriots the whole day? <laughs> I think I think it's, you're yelling about the Sox, baseball. Oh, that was awful. But isn't there a ballpark Frank joke to be made here? Yeah, I'm sure there's all kinds of. It's not not bun, worth it. Buns. Are you and... making a trans dick joke? <laughs> no, I'm trying to just make a like a, a, just more. The I was trying to go from the femme. Do- whatever. It's not important. I have I have actual questions. Um, yes. About that process. Wait, that would be a great drag king name, Ballpark Frank. Ballpark Frank. Nice. No, the best, the best drag name of all time is Electric Bill. <laughs> best name. Love it. Electric, Love it. A, a great name. Anyways, go on. <laughs> Do you find like have you switched up your technique now that yes. you feel like you? Okay, I, I'm just okay. curious because like we talk so much about submission and dominance and tops and bottoms and all these things that are so much harder to define In particularly when you're queer and femme because like you know the patriarchy is basically what has made these terms make sense because mm-hmm. of you know so i'm curious just like what the key difference is for you from going from like more dom maybe more top b wow. you know what i uh, mean well, as you know in a more mass con- way and now in more a more femme way no, this is wild that you're asking this question because, like, literally, like in the midst of us. A, I am so grateful to find a partner who is really familiar with more BDSM, more familiar with like sub and uh, dom, like, you know, dynamics, mm-hmm. yeah. and is willing and so able to listen to me talk about my own experiences and help me walk through that. Mm-hmm. Both my spouse and my my current partner are both like really fucking amazing. Like they're so I've learned a lot from them. But all that being said, beforehand, I was really dick centric. Everything was like evolving penetration. Right. A lot of it was because mm-hmm. like that was my mindset. Oh, I got this big old dick. I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to dick stuff. Oh, oh, I dick things. You know, like it's very like American pie. I'm going to yeah. stick my dick in an apple pie. Yeah. You know, you know, but classic like, Americana just... boy and girl next door. Just yeah. dick and stuff. <laughs> Baseball. Just dick and... Ooh. <laughs> and also it's always like, what can you stick your dick into? Ooh, a pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, ooh, watermelon? Yeah. You know, it's like a very <laughs> dick centric way to look at the world. But post transition, not so much, right? I can still dick things. <laughs> but it's but it's it's not the same. You know, I yeah. have a, a hollow core um strap on. I know there's gonna be some people who don't know what that is. So do you mind explaining what that is? It's like a fucking silicone strap on, right? Like a dildo, but it's hollow inside. So you put your fucking dick through it. And then you wear it like it's a strap on, right? Now, it here's the thing: most strap ons that I have found don't really fit my body, right? Mm-hmm. I'm 250 pounds. I'm six foot one. I'm a big fucking gal, right? With interesting proportions. 
<laughs> and I also have a dick. So like the way it sits on me yeah. is a little uncomfortable. So we got like five, 10 minutes before this thing's got to fucking rip off. Right. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, that's basically. Why, wait, I'm sorry. Why is your strap on a bomb? Like why? It sounds like you've got like, well, you, you put it on and you're like, okay. Hold on. Hold on. I watched a lot of 24 when I was a kid. All right. Uh, I was a boy when I was watching those and I understood my dick to be a ticking time bomb. So I thought, hey, put TNT on it, you know, try to have someone try to, you know, <laughs> diffuse it as I'm just pounding away as like a fucking, you know, uh, chimney cleaner, you know, ch <laughs> chimney, chimney cleaner, sweep. what the fuck? <laughs> That's what the word. <laughs> chimney sweep. That's the word. But really, yeah. I don't need that. Now it's almost like there's a lot more like intimacy with the emotions and the connection with like I'm choking you the fuck out or <laughs> slapping you across the face kind of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's just about that like, closeness, that <laughs> connection. I really mean, it takes yeah. a lot of trust. Yeah, <laughs> knowing someone before you slap them across the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're treating it. And also like, you know, I have nails now. And here's the thing that I never realized before transition. <laughs> nails are an MVP of sex. Like, they holy really are. fucking Interesting shit. Take. Interesting what? take. Yeah. No, I, I, they can be. They can be. Yeah. As long okay, as you, hold on. You keep Look at these short. nails. Look, I'm a lesbian yeah, manicure. There we go. Don't oh, there you fucking go. There question. You go. There you go. I have one hand that's ready to go. Can claw the shit out of you. The other one is ready to go in a there different you go. way. Okay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see that hand. I could only see the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, nails it's, MVP. It's really just more about moving away from penetration like centric sex yeah but like not saying not saying there isn't penetrative sex either because there is yeah but like i don't know this is really this is really graphic but i feel like this podcast can handle no, we're it. here for yes. us uh, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like trans femme sex to, to, in general i mean my dick shrunk like i was like at a, a very different size we'll just say somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 we'll just say that and, right and then <laughs> it went down a dramatic amount and when you're even if you don't want your dick, right? Even if that's something you want to do in your life and move away from that, it's still like difficult to yeah. lose. Because when it comes to sex, I am programmed to be yes. like, oh, yes. I'm going to fuck it so good. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, it can be really difficult for your brain to be like, well, now it's like three inches or like three and a half, right? Yeah. And now we're talking about like penetrative sex and you can't stay hard as much. So what is that like? Do you right. know what I mean? Mm. But it isn't about that. It's like the intimacy of that connection. Mm -hmm. um, and then plus on top of like everything else. And I also, with estrogen, my orgasms are full body orgasms now. Like I, yeah. before, when I would have, when I would have orgasms, it was like having one big light bulb on a fucking light switch, right? And when you yeah. turn on that light bulb, it's like real bright, right? But now it's like having 5,000 fucking light bulbs on a light switch. And when you turn that fucking light switch on, it like fucking old blow, it like blows light bulbs up I like that you brought shit. this back to electrician, <laughs> yes. to like electrician oh. uh, metaphors, by the way. 100%, I'm the fucking handy, ma'am. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that that's essentially what it's like though. So now I can keep going after, like there is, the end game of sex is so different. Yeah. Before yeah. it was like, Five minutes, ten minutes of just thrusting and humping, you know. Now it's like it's not. There's like this like hours of just like caressing and love and and intimacy that I I haven't embraced before. So it's been eye opening. Yeah. yeah. Fucking eye opening. And it, this is gonna sound crazy, but I wish that more people who have a masculine experience in life, specifically cis men, would experience sex in a different way. This is why I, I think really everyone do. can have lesbian sex. What you're yeah. describing. I agree with that. I, I think that, like, put away the dick for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, like, you know, punch your dick a couple times, get it to shrink down, punch and then... You know... <laughs> if you punch it, that's actually a form of activism. Just in your... If you're looking to dismantle the patriarchy, Look. punch a dick in your sex life. Yeah. Can you imagine? Just, like, it becomes very, very in for guys in their Bumble profiles to be like, I punch my dick once a day. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Look here. If you're a cis man and you don't punch yourself in the ball seven times a day, you're not doing us any favors, okay? You're not doing the work. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I feel like that's one of the things I worry about, like, in consideration of testosterone is that I know my sexual experience would change. And I'm like, no, nah, that's like one Are of the only things. That's the only, it was one of the only things that my, my body's got going for me. <laughs> the sex? Yeah. Your sex drive would, would go up. No, no. I mean the sensations. Like it can be, it can turn you, it's possible oh, that you wouldn't the, have. The superior female, the, qu- quote the unquote full female. Bo- the full body. Yeah, yeah, it's orgasm. possible what? that you wouldn't be able to orgasm as many times in a row. Yeah. The sensitivity changes. It's yeah, the g- bottom growth and et cetera. Yeah. There's a lot that can happen. And and like T and E are very different. Yeah. Like T is like a fucking nuclear bomb going off in your body. <laughs> uh, Why wouldn't and you want e, that? E is like a, like a, a fart you kind of heard. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> Because like T. That's tea, so funny. What's wild is T is like six months later, you your voice is different. You yeah. are like, you could like body press you could fucking lift a tree over your head you know what i mean like it's so geez, crazy wild. Ne- ne- so nico carney opened for me in in philadelphia recently and dude i i didn't know how t <laughs> like i didn't know the ins and outs of it nico is like five foot three and like maybe a couple months on t that he was just fucking moving furniture around that goddamn room <laughs> I was so fucking impressed by this stuff. I was like, I kind of want to take this just so I can load up my car faster. Like, this is so oh, I, useful. Oh, I, I have to move in about two months. I mean, if I take a little bit of a microdosing tea. <laughs> Wild. Like, like, what am I doing that day? That's how Wild. Joe Rogan takes tea. It's not about his fucking gender or <laughs> You know, like he just wants to be able to lift things. Yeah, he You're... just wants to have his skin more tightly pulled around his face and head. Yeah. <laughs> you bring up a great topic, and I would be, I would be sad if I didn't bring it up. But this, you bring up a topic that I always talk about on, d- during my weekly show, and that is if we're okay with cis men taking testosterone so they can still be men in their fucking forties and fifties. Then why do we have such a fucking problem with trans femme and trans mask people taking hormones to feel more like in their gender? It yeah. makes because no sense. They don't of course. see gender as a spectrum, and so therefore their maleness is binary. So they, you can't add more maleness. Like in their head, it, it's a contradiction. It doesn't make any sense. But I think that's the way that they think about uh, it. I think I, you're right. Interesting. I think you're right. It's but, but it also, makes zero sense. Yeah, because yeah. I, I get so tired of these. Anytime I watch sports stuff or anytime I listen to a, like a shitty podcast for some reason. Like and then one. I hear <laughs> a, a fucking like commercial that says like, you know, are you, you know, men, did you know that when you get in your 40s and 50s, like you're more like your sex drive goes down and this happens and this happens. And it's all things that like if it happens, it makes you less of a man for some reason, mm-hmm. yeah. which is a wild thing to me. That's yeah. a wild premise to have. Like, yeah. how does that work? How do, I mean, how do they have that logic and not understand? It is wild. You know? there's, there's so many, I mean, so many different kinds of people take hormones for so many different reasons. I mean, birth control is essentially hormone manipulation. Yeah. Like, if there's yeah. things wrong with your thyroid, you have to take medicine yep. regarding your hormones. And cis women take T2 for certain problems as well. Yeah. And it's just, it's hear- just as soon as it's for... The class designated as other. It's like, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking sweet. When we hear a weird hormonal thing that has happened to me in the last week. Yes, yes I would love to hear that. <laughs> so I have, I just upgraded my upgraded, what am I, a fucking four Taurus? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I just, I just you're fucking. A, uh, you're a vulva. <laughs> uh, 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 standing ovation of just cringe. <laughs> Cringe talk. So good. Ovation of cringe. That's what I aim for. (laughs) Love it. So I'm driving my Volvo and (laughs) (laughs) no, I just like increased my dose of of estradiol like Mm -hmm. three or four months ago. Well, it turns out I don't listen to my doctor too well. And I was taking it all at one time of the day. (laughs) Oh my God. And and I was throughout the day. Yeah, mm-hmm, sadly, <laughs> because I, I, you're like weeping. You're like fully weeping. Oh, it's bad. It's not good. It's oh, not no. good. So, after four months, I'm getting like <laughs> intense mood swings. I'm like shaking sometimes. Oh. I'm like, 
I'm like crying while watching a cat play with a turtle. <laughs> like I'm having a hard time. So then I, I'm like, oh my God, I'm having aches and pains and I'm also passing out. I was passing <gasps> out. That's scary. Wow. So oh I my called God. my doctor and my doctor said to me, uh, that sounds like estrogen poisoning. <gasps> and I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, Have, what are you taking your medicine? And I'm like, you know, at 11 o'clock at night and sometimes midnight. Sometimes one o'clock, sometimes 10 o'clock at night, sometimes seven o'clock in the morning, sometimes three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and, and my doctor was like, wait, all you're taking all three doses of estradiol at one time, various amounts of time over the last three months. And I went, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, my oh, doctor no. like lost their shit on me. Oh no. Uh, and said, you are impossible. <laughs> you are so, Doctors aren't I, allowed I, to tell us that. Well, you know how women are bad at math. How the well, fuck it, is she supposed to keep track of all of those science doses? My doctor and I have a great rapport. Fucking oh, love her. That's good. But she only sees trans people too. So she yeah. like she knows all this. Yeah, she's an amazing doctor that works with basically almost exclusively trans people. Um, so she's a really great understanding of stuff. So she's like, yeah. you need to go off for a week. So I went off mm. for a week. Uh, but now I'm having menopause symptoms. And <gasps> I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I am never, I almost raged, punched a hole in the wall last night. I was like, ah! <laughs> and you know, like out of nowhere. And then I would get a hot flash and immediately get a cold chill and be like, I fucking hate this. I have such sympathy for my mother, my grandmother, yeah, all the women in my yeah. life who went through this. And I was an asshole about it. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> well, thank you for the great, very vulnerable and great educational stuff. Thank you so much. We're we're going to go to Kate. Yes. Kate, did you have gay sex this week? I did. I just wanted to say that. Anyway, my, that's not what my story is. My gay sex is that uh, my house is fucking me. No. I oh, right. Right. We have. I almost forgot. Oh, okay. Right. Here's, here's here's where we're at. We are. We're getting some work done, which is great news. We moved into our house in 2019, which I consider like one of my greatest blessings in life. And then it immediately started leaking. <laughs> uh, we oh, had no. a we have like a little back extension that started leaking. Then we paid for a roof. He did a uh, like a rubber roof over, but it didn't solve the problem, so the roof continued to leak. Yeah. And so then we found out we had water coming in through the walls as well. And so it was kind of like Nightmareville. So we ended up Fuck. getting, yeah, we ended up like uh, saving up for a while. We got an insurance payout, luckily, from uh, the hurricanes because we, fl we flooded while we were on our engagement vacation. Wow. <laughs> we came back and the basement and, had flooded. And Mercury, so since this is your area of expertise, jump in with any questions that you need to know because... We got to okay. fix this house. Well, so so here's where it. we're at. We're, we've made some progress. We got we got um we got some new roofing put on and we're getting all new vinyl siding because we had stucco and stucco in New York is just you're shooting yourself in the foot. So we're having the house wrapped in vinyl siding and we had they've already come and redone the roofs, so that's great. But one problem that still is unexplained was the plumber deal, which was our kitchen sink stopped working this winter and then our dishwasher stopped working. And so we called a plumber. They said it's a frozen pipe. So they took out the whole counter. I think they replaced that pipe with an updated pipe that won't freeze as much. They shoved more insulation in there. The water in the sink started working again, but the, the dishwasher is still not working. So that's where we're at in terms of... Did you the replace the line going into the dishwasher by chance? I don't think so. That might be what it is. Interesting. So like, okay, so when you have a frozen pipe, lots of things can happen, right? The fallout yeah. of a frozen pipe is fucking wild, yeah. right? Like it can be so damaging for the rest of your pipes. It can also like sometimes um, a frozen pipe when you're like moving things and cutting it out and adding a new pipe too, you'll get things lodged in different parts of your drain pipes, right? Interesting. I wouldn't be shocked or blown away that if there's something lodged in your your, your like um incoming line mm -hmm. for your your dishwasher i would not be shocked at all so i would take that apart that like um your lead in line basically yeah and see if you could just re a replace that b 
Um, just take it off and see if you can like blow some type of compressed air or something through there. Okay. And see I was going to say compressed blocked. air. I was also going to see say that <laughs> no, maybe no, maybe 100%. maybe do some compressed air into the into the line. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> but that would be make, my first make guess. Make sure the air is definitely compressed though, because if think, you do regular yeah. air, not as good. Yeah, yeah. This, don't this use, feels don't, right to me. This feels yeah, right. Yeah. Don't use decompressed air. You don't want. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want the air just as strung out and, and pissed off and stressed and compressed as possible. You want that air so compressed. It's like a big fucking jump that you've been holding on all day. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? And then you fucking like unkink that hose and you just let it rip. And then you just like blow apart the toilet bowl. That is what we're looking for. All right? Exactly. If That's, anyone I'll from TikTok that. is listening to this and they're mm-hmm. thinking, I really thought Mercury was a wholesome lady. You are <laughs> fucking wrong. You are so wrong. I have been, I was a fucking <laughs> sex worker in the early knots. I was a fuck, I, I'm a burlesque dancer. I've been to the burlesque call of fame. I host a show where I open the show every week by saying, are you ready to see some buttholes? I mean, come <laughs> on, come on. Not wholesome. <laughs> Party time. And, and I, I, love compressed it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I hope. Compressed, yeah, mm-hmm. putting compressed air in the butt. <laughs> No, they're um, Republican buttholes. Maybe they're that's Republican what we can do buttholes. with your with your uh, constipation. Just yeah, put yeah, some yeah, compressed some air in your air. mouth and see if it flies out the other end. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome what? to the shit cast. All poop all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, like, do you, do you? I I think you guys. Sh- I think Trans Handyman should look at your your place. I think well, you guys I, should collab. I, I would be honored. But we are the vi- the vinyl should come in like in a couple weeks. Okay. Then we're doing windows, too, because there was water getting in through the windows, which caused carpenter ants to come, which I vanquished. How is the water getting through the windows? Is it is it not cocked around the side or what's going on with the windows? Yeah, they're they're not cocked. The windows are like 30 years old or 35 years old. The guy came and was like, they don't even do this like this anymore. No. <laughs> and no. then because the house is stucco, it just has like massive cracks that were never. Oh, that's right. Repaired. It's stucco. Yeah. yeah. So they're just going to they're going to put vinyl on, do all new capping and caulking and is this a, put new windows Is this a in. drywall house or is it a brick house? On the inside? Yeah. Yeah, drywall. Good. Uh, <laughs> good stuff. Well, at least it's replaceable with drywall. You know, yeah, like I at think... least you can work with it. Okay, with here's it. here's something that because we do need to replace some some drywall. Here's a question: What's the difference I'm between drywall? I'm just dry... gonna say pussy, just so that the listeners at home know that it's still a gay sex podcast. <laughs> are, are you good? kidding? That are was, you kidding? Uh-huh. There are some femmes right now that have turned off the episode. You don't think house talk I, is lesbian <laughs> material? There's The masks are engaged and the femmes are like, Hold what on. is going on? Hold <laughs> on. I make a promise to you. I, while we're talking about this, I will work in gay sex like in the I windows. I know, we really miss the opportunity the with the caulking. But- oh, no. I'm working into it. It's I got. I'm working around the cock. I'm working around the cock. I'm leading into the cock. I'm not gonna grip the cock right away and just thrust into it. I'm gonna take my time and like work into the cock. All right. She, she literally told me my pipes are clogged and that I need to get them cleared out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on. Okay. So Come on. Okay. we need yeah. to get some of our. Uh, what's the difference between drywall and sheetrock? Is there a difference? No, there's not a difference. So. Drywall is like the tiny kind of product. Sheetrock is just the brand. Sheetrock okay. is one of the most predominant brands. It's kind of like Kleenex and tissue paper. Right? Got it, got it, got like, it. Like it's that mentality. Yeah. Okay. So if I needed to, so they're they're gonna waterproof the house to do all the heavy lifting, and then pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yep. and then me type pussy needs to. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to uh, uh, finger the sheetrock off of the wall yep. and then yep. put up new sheetrock. Yeah. Get it? Just because it's soaking. Hard. Because this is not because this is not a joke. It is soaking wet in there. Uh, <laughs> 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 we, okay. Yeah. We so we had, had a mold guy come and kind of sniff the asshole of our house and say no mold. So that's good. Sniffing ass. That's gay, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, so, yeah. so how, how would I maybe go about that t- by myself, DIY, taking out the sheetrock and then putting it back up? New, new sheetrock up. Oh, Kate. This is extremely hard to do in a, in a, in a, in a non-visual <laughs> <Damn laughs> podcast. Damn it. Uh, but, but essentially no, what visual, we want to do. We're visual. Okay. Okay. So 
this is what we're gonna do. This my hand, <laughs> my hand yeah. uh, is a in is the wall, right? This other yeah. hand is you. You're gonna walk over here and you're just gonna pound away at the. <laughs> oh, you just bang on that fucking wall. Just bang on you it. just bang fucking go to town, pound town but on that wall. Basically, <laughs> what we're doing is we're gonna find a good entry point to yeah, like, yeah, start taking are. everything off. Yeah. And find where the stud is so you're not hitting a stud or anything electrical, right? Oh, right. Yeah. And then you're going to go into it, and then you're going to use that hole. Use it. <laughs> use use, use it and abuse yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you wear the proper PPE. Wink, wink. Uh, and <laughs> then get your hand in there and then start just pulling away the hole. It's just making the hole nice and big. Yeah. If you can get your full <laughs> fist in it, <laughs> going to your forearm, yeah. into your elbow, and just keep thrusting it. You're going to be like, and this is when I do the down. come hither motion, right? right exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. You want to make sure you get your hand in a good angle. You can just do come hither with it. Uh, and every now and then just check in with the wall to make sure she's having a good time. Oh, yeah. And if you need to, don't do not do the thing that a lot of people do and spit in your hand. No, right. don't do that. Go get the lubricant yeah. and really just lube up the hand. <laughs> Don't spit. Don't be that gross. Kate's at home, like trying to take this drywall down, being like, "I'm aroused, but also like, <laughs> not sure why." <laughs> but but basically, what we're going to do is we're trying to find all the seams of where the drywall went, Kate, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we're going to basically take out what we need. It. Um. I'm I'm assuming the only you only need to take out the bottom half of the drywall, right? Not the whole drywall is is soaked, right? No, it's like um, it's. It's it is it's cat. it's towards the bottom because oh, the while the water came down. Yes, wait. Tell us about your cat. Much more exciting. Okay, this is Nitro <laughs> Alabama Jenkins. Uh, what he a was name. a boxer in a former life. That's why he's Alabama Jenkins. Aww. Uh he's an adorable little guy. He's a mischief maker and he helps me fix things. But by help, I mean he gets in a way and nearly <laughs> dies all the time. Uh, <laughs> Wasting those lives real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's at like two lives left. You know what I mean? But he's only four. So we got to really make sure we save those lives. <laughs> he's got to follow those OSHA guidelines. <laughs> Are you really going to take the drywall out yourself? <sighs> Maybe. All right. That, the dr- Taking the drywall out is not hard. Putting it in is. Mm. So what the hard part, if you're doing it yourself, Kate, if there is no second pair of hands, Mm-hmm. You got invest in like a drywall installation tool, like dr- get like drywall holders. You know what I'm talking about? Those those tools that like hold the drywall in place and you can screw it in. Does that make sense? It's like a platform. I, I I haven't seen one, but I I do know how to Google and ask questions at Home Depot. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would also say there's some great resources on on YouTube specifically, like, like home renovation. Uh, yeah. Uh, YouTube's that I love. Yeah. Right. I deal more with the home, like the home repair and like, oops, kind of scenarios yeah. rather than installations. <laughs> yeah, this, and a, is, a river. this is way beyond oops. <laughs> now, this, this is, is uh, this is you a bought a oops. lemon. You bought a lemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, but that happens. It happens. I mean, honestly, like, hey, this is this is not the end of the world. You can yeah. absolutely do this. Yeah. Right. The drywall is one of those things where everyone acts like it's the hardest bucket thing in the world. And it isn't. It just takes time. And if you have to redo the mudding or redo the painting or redoing the installation, it's just redoing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? All it is, all drywall is, is fucking cardboard with plaster inside of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's fucking nothing. Yeah. It's, you made it's it seem like a, a lot brick. less scary, which I appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> Try redoing brick. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if you fuck up brick, you are fucked. You are so fucked, you know? But if drywall is like putty, it's basically Play-Doh for grownups, okay? Like, your house is you're made gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, you, yeah. were, you were so fantastic. Like, I just so much information in various categories. Yes. Um, Especially butt sex. A lot about butt sex. <laughs> and cocks. A lot about cocks and butt sex. <laughs> where we did kind of did where people can find you, but at the end we do butt plugs. Yeah. Anything you want to talk about plug for our listeners? If you enjoy the nonsense that I'm spewing here, I run a weekly online burlesque show and in-person oh, it's burlesque online. show. Oh, amazing. That's awesome. Our listeners would love to watch. It's a wonderful show. It's all, all bodies of burlesque bodies is our motto. Um, you can get tickets at mercurystardust.com. It is Wisconsin, it's Wisconsin's only weekly burlesque show, but it's also the United States' only weekly burlesque show that's run by two trans femme people. 
Awesome. Uh, my co-host cool. and co-producer, Amethyst Von Trollenberg, is a six foot five black trans woman, and she's just as obnoxious as I am. We're super, <laughs> we love the show. Um, and my show is also run by a trans mass non-binary person. So like our show is just very trans friendly, very yeah. trans focused. Um, and yeah, come, if you want to see me pour milk on myself and act like a cow on stage, <laughs> I want to see 100%. it. <laughs> if you want to see me, um, I broke a chair last week while I did a lap dance on somebody. It was amazing. I ran across the stage. I jumped like I was a fucking like Teen Titan. Wait, why did I say Teen Titan? <laughs> teen Titan? Why? No, did no. I, say... I think I think it would be great to end on some pedophilia. We didn't get that no, in today. Geez. I wasn't even thinking that. Christ. I just thought it was a nerdy reference. What's I teen... was thinking a nerdy reference. I was thinking of... What's Teen Titan? You've never seen Teen Titans? No. Teen Titans. I'm not, a, I'm, not a si- I'm not a sicko like you guys. <laughs> It's a cartoon. Oh, my bad. I was trying to say I was like Beast Boy jumping off yes. the fucking stage. I caught you. I caught jumping you. on someone's lap and just thrusting. And I thrusted so hard that I broke the chair with the guy. <laughs> it was amazing. It was. If you have not lived. If you have not. But been it's about almost... the intimacy and the connection, right? Yeah, it's, it's and loving softer, your body. You know, and like breaking a... folding chairs with grown men who came to a show <laughs> and are just terrified. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I love, love it. it. I love it. But yeah, I do that. Also, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can support me on yes. Patreon under Mercury Stardust as well. And I make daily content on TikTok. And um, I, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for my business manager, Maggie. Maggie, who is like the greatest person in the world. So shout out, big shout out to Maggie. But yeah, that's who I am. Mercury Starfuck. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Kate, anything you want to plug? I don't... No, just the the instant Twitter at the yeah, Kate Sisk and uh, yeah. And you guys know my and my mailing sh- list, my mailing yes, list yes. on my website, mailing and phone list at katesisk.com. Same thing for me at katesisk.com. <laughs> no. One more shout out for the tours and the Patreon. Those are the things that keep this podcast going. We're just that we are not the big fancy podcast that you may think we are just because we have ads. We really do struggle. And patreon.com slash WHGS, those patrons make this podcast possible. They make uh, Alex's work possible. They support the co-hosts. They support me. Please consider donating. It really, really helps. And also coming to see me on tour to go see um kate or any of our guests live is also super super helpful follow everybody online um and for the gay thought this week yeah i've just sort of like kind of had it with these these algorithms and the way they treat gay people i'm sure i've ranted about this before i'm ranting about on my instagram for two months i was banned shadow banned on instagram i'm finally getting it worked out because of the name of this podcast and i've been flagged on tiktok and now i'm having suppression there And it's just wild to me that the way these algorithms work is they, you know, they assume that negative things are going to be said about gay people. So when gay people start to talk about themselves, they turn on you. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm tired the way a lot of you are probably tired. And some of you are even more in even more difficult circumstances than me. And and you're tired, tired of having to be better than everybody to get the same results. It's frustrating. But. The cool thing about it is that the gay community at these apps and within my own podcast community have helped me so much. So many of you working at these companies have reached out to me, reached out to try to connect me with people. And that is such a magical thing that you don't see in other types of communities. You don't see that level of support. And I wasn't really super connected to the queer community before this podcast. And now that I've seen stuff like that, it really has moved me um, how wonderful you all are. So thank you so much for doing that. I really can't tell you how much I appreciate you. Um, You're just the best. You're simply the best. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good week and thank you for your support. And I love you very much.